Hello all of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and today I want to talk to you about video games, or more specifically about video games that are absolutely hard as nails, so tough in fact that you have to punish yourself to play. Now with the rise of games like Dark Souls and all of the clones that that has spewed off in the multi-limbed form that it has created on this video game industry, there are a ton of people that love a good bit of challenge, but sometimes that gets taken a bit too far. As this was less of a uphill climb and a bit of a slog and more trying to actually assail Everest using only your nipples. Ouch. So let's get on with it. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games you have to punish yourself to play. Number 10. Lobotomy Corporation the Lobotomy Corporation is as wonderful as it is obscure, and as obscure as it is bloody hard. In short, it's all three of these things perfectly blended together, which is almost all you can ask for when you want a bit of a challenging game, but don't really fancy Dark Souls today. And the Lobotomy Corporation truly provides here. While the name does sound a bit grim, it's actually the title of an SCP style scenario, which, for those who might feel a bit lost here, is basically a facility that tries to contain, control, and understand a series of strange supernatural creatures. The the fun part about this, and also the most difficult part, is that you have no idea what these beings respond poorly or well to until you research them, and by that point you've had to do something to try to keep them under control. And these monsters don't leave after you've initially dealt with them either, meaning that the whole thing can gently become a huge balancing act of you taking care of half a dozen terrifying monstrosities and one really, really cute dog. It's a weird game. Number 9. Hotline Miami 2 as the sequel to Hotline Miami, it seems like 2 might never compare to its iconic predecessor, but for better or worse, depending on who you speak to, it certainly did. The reasons for why are definitely a mixed bag. While Hotline Miami 2 is undeniably fun and challenging, sometimes this challenge comes from artificial forms, such as incredibly fast enemies that you'd have to be killed by in order to be able to predict where they are, enemies that require you to awkwardly lean the camera up or to one side to actually see them, and straight up hordes that rush you. Now, None of this is impossible to deal with, but especially if you're trying a playthrough on hard mode, it adds a layer of random chance to the difficulty. It's still more than possible to plan it all out, but when you're blindsided from off-screen, you can't help but feel a small pang of extra irritation. That said, the fact that you're more likely to get swarmed with enemies in 2 does mean that it's incredibly fun, as there's nothing quite like sweating about the fact that one hit will kill you while you take on a team of equally murderous people. Number 8. Darkest Dungeon Darkest Dungeon is a game that, theoretically, can be very easy if you know how all the boss fights go, and you also know the perfect setup for your team, and never go into a dungeon without more supplies than you need. So in short, it's not going to be fun. Unless you decide to use a guide for the whole thing, or otherwise buff your teammates by doing just the easiest dungeons repeatedly. Otherwise, though, you're in for an absolute hellscape, so strap on in. Because this game is purpose designed to kill off your favourite characters, who you've likely spent ages levelling and generally taking care of, and if they're not outright dying, they're going insane and ruining the mental stability of the rest of your party, increasing your chances of not losing just one team member, but now the whole crew. Add to this the bosses that are capable of some simply wild shenanigans, like putting one of your team into a pot and cooking them alive, or just infecting them all with a terrible disease, and you are in for a rough ride from start to finish. So maybe don't get attached to any of your squad anytime soon. Number 7. Ring Fit now, the Ring Fit is an interesting franchise to consider when it comes to difficult games, because how difficult it is very much is a matter that's left up to you, because as an exercise game, it's aware that it probably shouldn't give you a heart attack. While an initial tutorial tests your strength to decide what difficulty you start the game on, at any point you are welcome to lower the difficulty as much as you'd like, and at the start of every play session it does ask if you want to raise or lower the difficulty. Only you totally won't, because your pride will tell you that this is actually a fate worse than death. If you want as good a workout as you can get, or are just too stubborn to downgrade the difficulty from where the game first set you, you can definitely be in for a rough ride. This is doubly true if you turn up the difficulty a ton whilst playing through the easier beginning levels of the game, because things will get quickly troublesome. This is one game that might at least give you abs in reward for your suffering, but at the same time, suffer you will. Number 6. Super Meat Boy the really annoying thing about Super Meat Boy is that it's so well designed and so smooth that you can't blame it at all for your deaths because at the back of your head you know that it was you that was responsible for it. It's perhaps the fairest game that also somehow manages to be absolutely cruel, and that's exactly what's so awful and so brilliant about it. As you can see, I'm quite conflicted. It can beat you seven ways to Sunday, but at no point can you scoff and say, well, this game is clearly broken, because that is actually ridiculous. And so you're stuck confronting Slick and 
speedy platforming with levels that don't often offer you so much as a second to stop and catch your breath, and that results in some truly arduous times. You will die a million times over, but it will be worth it to just get that little bit further into each level and to get slightly closer to having bragging rights for having finished it. Number 5. Out of This World out of This World is both one of the most fun games to play without any prior knowledge and also one of the most frustrating. This is because you really don't get any moment where the game teaches you what to actually do, and your first death will almost without a doubt come in literally the first three seconds of the game after accidentally walking towards a leech that turns out can actually kill you, or even just by standing too long in the start area. And This sets a tone for the rest of the game, where unless you play the whole thing while studying a walkthrough, you're gonna die countless times to weird or more or less un predictable deaths. You can die by rolling the wrong way down a tunnel that you can't see the end of, walking onto spikes that look like they're just part of the background, being hit by random falling rocks, and stepping onto what looks like ground but is actually an angry floor mushroom full of teeth. In short, if you want to finish out of this world, you have to be okay with a few dozen pretty unfair and totally unexpected deaths along the way. Number 4. Ninja Gaiden Black while there is precisely no easy Ninja Gaiden, crowd consensus is that Ninja Gaiden Black is definitely the hardest. And it's pretty hard to disagree with that, all things considered. The game does offer an easy mode, Ninja Dog Mode, if you die too many times in one section, but even this is kind of a cruel prank of sorts, because despite being far easier than the regular modes of the game, you could still easily find it difficult, which might be especially aggravating if you chose that in the hopes of just getting through this experience. And that's to say nothing of the boss encounters, which uh, are basically like throwing yourself against an angry brick wall that is covered in spikes. To put it into perspective, in one of the opening sections of the game, it puts you up against three ninjas of the same skill level as you and asks you to fight them all at once. It's brutal! Number 3. Demon's Souls I mean, it's not a list of punishing games without mentioning at least one of From Software's collection of masochistic treats, so you know what, let's do Demon's Souls today, because it's perhaps the most punishing for two reasons. The first, and perhaps most obvious, is, is that it was the first in the series, meaning that people going into it weren't yet aware of how hard the experience was going to get, whereas if you're picking up a copy of Dark Souls 3, you're likely to know what you're getting into at least a little bit. Secondly, Demon's Souls is just crueler than any of the other entries on this franchise. I mean, they all share the same premise, suffer and die a lot until you're able to overcome your enemies, but Demon's Souls takes it just a step further. Because no other installment contains a boss battle that can permanently take away your levels if you get hit with a certain move. No other installment has a boss fight that involves taking on another potentially OP human player. Or at least it did, before the servers got taken down. R.I.P. my friend. None of these additions made the game impossible, because a fair number of people have completed it, but it's undeniable that Demon's Souls, I'll stop saying it in a weird way, takes a little extra joy in punishing you in weird and unusual ways. Number 2. I Wanna Be The Guy most people that have played I Wanna Be The Guy are likely already wincing at having to remember it. It's one of a long line of ultra-hard platformers, and specifically crafted to sabotage every waking moment that you're playing it. Each level requires you to play it at least half a dozen times to even know what you're supposed to do or where you're supposed to go, because what your eyes see and what the level actually will do are completely at odds. Random spikes will just pop out, platforms that appear to be solid will just completely disappear and crumble beneath you, and sometimes invisible blocks will prevent you you from doing a clear jump and send you falling to your death. It'd be a difficult game as is, but the fact that it actively takes what you think exists and then messes with you as much as it can turns it from being difficult to downright devilish. Since its creation, I Wanna Be The Guy has spawned countless games inspired by it, each awful and wonderful in their own way, but none will have quite the reputation or the ability to intimidate like this game, and that might actually be a good thing. And number one, Ghosts and Goblins. Ghosts and Goblins is the epitome of old-school difficult games, and alongside Battletoads is likely one of the very few titles that ruled our childhoods as being borderline impossible titles. And while the two-hits-and-die mechanic initially looks the same as, I don't know, say, Mario, it is made significantly less forgiving due to the amount of enemies that you face. Monsters just pop out from everywhere, out of the ceiling, out of the floor, and out of your bloody nightmares. The Red Devils, for example, seem to have incredibly unpredictable movement patterns as well, meaning that 
that your chances of dodging them require either godly reflexes or for you to have played the game enough that you just know where they're going to go instinctively. Similarly, if you don't fire your weapon off like it's a semi-automatic whenever you face the final boss Astaroth, he will quickly murder you in cold blood, making all of your perilous efforts all for nothing. Still though, there are very few games which allow you to defeat such a great evil and save a princess while being in your underwear, so at least it has that going for it. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games you have to punish yourself to play. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. If you want to chat to me further about all things to do with video games, wrestling, TV, film, whatever else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about video games that you have to punish yourself to play, but you know what, my friend? You should not punish yourself in real life. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has down days, but please do not take that inwardly and beat yourself up. You do not deserve that. You deserve love, happiness, and success. I know that things can be stressful, especially at the moment, so allow yourself to take a break, treat yourself with love and compassion, because you are a big ledge and you bloody well deserve it. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.